So we just returned from a five-day backpacking trip through Glacier National Park. We saw three grizzly bears, including a mom with a little cub that was only like 10 feet away from us. Hi, bear. We saw a mountain goat carcass. There wasn't a ton left of it, but it was still pretty creepy walking over and around that thing. And a few million mosquitoes that like really feasted on our blood. The mosquitoes are crazy bad tonight. My cousin, Meike, visited us all the way from Belgium and we took her to Glacier National Park. Uh, Glacier does get quite busy in the summer, so that's why we want to share some tips and tricks with you for visiting Glacier during peak time. We didn't realize that it requires a vehicle registration system now just to even like get in line to get into the park. You are able to get around that by going in either early or late. We would just drive into the park like prior before 6 a.m. or if you go in after 4 p.m. you're generally okay. It's really nice going in early to the park. It is one of the busiest parks in the country. So getting in early, you really miss all the crowds. You can find parking pretty easy and get to experience the park kind of just all by yourself there. The only downside is that you have to get up real early, but that's what happens when you're <laughs> last minute to the party. Also, if you want to go hiking in the back country, you'll need a permit and turns out that many hikers arrange that permit way in advance. Not like us. <laughs> Once again, we're pretty last minute with everything. So um, we headed to the backcountry office in Apgar village. The backcountry office is where the backcountry rangers are and there you can arrange permits to go hiking, uh, buy your camping permits. Uh, we got there pretty early like five in the morning. Like five in the morning. And yet we weren't the first ones waiting for a permit. There were, already there were three other hikers waiting in turn to get all a permit. All in their chairs with their blankets, all super cozy. <laughs> Probably been sitting there all night like it was Black Friday or something. Yeah, <laughs> Black Friday. So once again, if you can arrange your hiking permits early, please do so. Nevertheless, we got I'll permits go for out. the last campsites that were left in the park, basically. And of course, we took them. So thank you for that, Rangers. And it's really only many glacier that gets fully booked out. Some of the like the less popular areas you can almost always get permits through. So even last minute, like you can always go backpacking in the park. You just won't get to go to the like best areas. But when you're talking about a place as beautiful as Glacier National Park, really anywhere you're, anywhere you're exploring is absolutely gorgeous. So don't worry too much about it. This was our final itinerary of our hiking trip. Uh, the first day we hiked from the Loop Trailhead to Granite Campground and we visited Granite Chalet. And day two was from Granite Campground to Flathead Peak, otherwise known as Mosquito Country. It's night number two in Glacier, we're at an area called Flat Top and uh, I think it's time to crawl into the tents and hide. <laughs> uh, day three was from Flathead to Stony Indian Lake, a must see. And day four was from Stony Indian Campground to 50 Mountains Campgrounds. A beautiful day. Day five, we hiked back out. We hiked out back. <laughs> The chalet was really pretty. We were kind of hoping that there might be beer up there, but there wasn't. <laughs> Just a really gorgeous view. Even water is like seven or eight dollars a liter. It's very pricey, so don't actually go there thinking you're going to get anything. No. But it, it's a gorgeous view and it's really worth seeing. Maybe if you can book it out like a year in advance or something like that, you could actually stay in like one of the little, one of the little Stone rooms. Stone cottages, yeah. yeah. Then again, we were late with that as well. <laughs> But it's beautiful, it's definitely worth seeing. And then the High Line Trail in that area is definitely the highlight for us with how late the snow was. We weren't able to hike it. We were getting reports from really strong hikers too that were like slipping and falling on the snow patches. Like, I mean, this was the middle of July. It's like kind of wild that there was still that much snow there. This was the latest in the park's history even that going to the Sun Road opened. It was still closed when we first got there, which we were shocked about actually. And True. meant we drove the entire way around the park yeah. for nothing. But uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, keep in mind that you'll definitely encounter snow patches in the backcountry and even in the thread in the places that yeah, even in the most common places, glacier gets snow almost year round. Yeah. And did we see bears? We saw bears. <laughs> we saw three bears. We saw three bears. Yeah. <laughs> the first ones we like literally walked right up on and Elsa's standing there staring like what is that creature up on a log? turned out to be a grizzly cub. It kind of shocked me at first too. <laughs> I, didn't, I just didn't compute this little cute bear cub standing like <laughs> literally 15 feet away from us. They were so close. And then of course, like once I realized what it was, I like pulled the bear spray out and I'm all ready and the girls start backing off while I kind of stand guard there, but God, they were fun. <laughs> okay, we can redo that Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. I liked how you did that, baby. And did we see bears? <laughs> we saw bears. <laughs> oh my. Mm -hmm. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. But what can you do to hike safely in bear country now? What do you do with your food? With your food bags? How do you sleep at night? Here are some tips. Most campsites in Glacier uh, they have a pole where you can hang your food. And Ryan taught me how to hang my food. That was a fun lesson. Uh, some even have bear boxes. So how easy is that? Then you don't even have to bring a rope. You can just lock it up in the bear box. Still, it's better to bring a rope in case you strand somewhere or in case the campsite doesn't have bear boxes. The park also offers bear spray for rent and bear canisters for rent, if that makes you feel safer. And of course, it's very safe to hike with a bear canister in grizzly country, so yeah. Not and a bad idea. <laughs> you'll always want to check regulations first. Some areas require bear canisters. So just make sure you're like, and the park will let you know this when you get your permit too, but yeah. just check any regulations before you go, especially with like fires or anything else that could be pertinent yeah. to your trip. But uh, we found that the rangers in Glacier are so good with educating about how to hike in bear country, educating about anything really. They're really informative. When you get your permit, they let you watch a, a, a video. Make you watch a video. <laughs> Make you watch a video yeah. about how to hike safely, what to do in case of emergencies, in case of a bear attack, in case of anything, really. So. It's a pretty shocking video, too, when they're like saying what you should do, lay there on the ground, and if the bear does start to eat you, then fight back with everything you have. And uh, if you really need to drive a point home that like grizzlies will and can eat you, then yeah, those videos do a very good job. Be careful with your food and be smart out there. Exactly. We also took a guided ranger walk around St. Mary Lake. That's in the east side of the park. It's a bit calmer there. There are less tourists. And those are the glaciers that we have at the park today. We have 26 in total. And there we saw a moose coming out of the water. And how is that possible? Moose can dive, which I was shocked to learn. They can hold their breath for over a minute and they can dive to depths of 20 feet. The image of a moose just like diving underwater, <laughs> eating plants at the bottom of some lake 20 foot down like shocks me. I really want to like get an underwater housing for this camera and try to film a moose like swimming <laughs> under the water and like eating plants. It blows yeah. my mind, a giant moose diving for food. Pretty <laughs> Crazy. incredible, yeah. So apparently the ranger told us on the guided tour that they love algae and aquatic plants and that's why you should keep your eyes peeled if you see a lake somewhere in moose country. You might see a moose coming out of the water. Imagine swimming on that lake and all of a sudden a moose just comes rising up from the bottom right underneath you. <laughs> That's a crazy thought. It still blows my mind. I can't believe that moose dive like that. <laughs> and then a chapter dedicated to a, a less favored animal. Bzzz. <laughs> mosquitoes! <laughs> They're here too, it's their home too. And how do you handle mosquitoes? Suit up. One of the most effective things, even better than all the chemical sprays that you can use, is just to wear rain pants and rain jacket. They can't bite through the thick fabric of that. And then if you use a head netting too, you can get away from using like any sorts of DEET entirely. Be careful like swimming and applying this stuff right before you like jump in lakes. We really want to try to keep chemicals like out of these like pristine water up here. Um, 
Yeah, true. Of course, deed and permethrin and the other ones, the lemon, eucalyptus, insect repellents, they work to a certain extent, but yeah, like you said, try not to swim, try not to eat it as well or yeah. lick it, you know? And be very careful <laughs> with deet because it will eat rubber and certain materials. Like if you get it on your hands and then you go to drive, it can like melt your steering wheel a little bit, make your steering wheel get sticky. Yeah. It'll eat the mesh of your backpack if the deet leaks in there. I've had that happen. It'll just like melt a hole right through it. So be really careful. These things are pretty serious chemicals, but sometimes they are necessary and yeah, we definitely use it a little bit out there yeah. when you're hiking. <laughs> they can keep up with you sometimes and like, yeah, yeah, mosquitoes. They're not fun, but uh, they're hey, part of it. It's part of the adventure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you got anything else? Not bad. Eh? No, not bad at all.